Okay, welcome back to part three, the final part. Now, let's just make some aesthetic changes to this, these div tags here. So as an example, let's say you're looking at this div tag here, and you say, well, I really want to drop this down a little further. I'd like to put more space between the paragraphs. I'm just going to cut some of this paragraph out for a second. And uh, uh, let's just make some changes here. So I'm going to double click main content and make those changes. So I want to drop this down, deselect another 10 pixels from the top. So I'm going to say 10 pixels from the top, which means I need to minus, minus 10 pixels from the height. And it drops it down. Then I want to move it from the left. I'll just pick a number plus 27 pixels from the left. And that means I need to minus, minus 27 pixels from the width. See how simple it is? It's simple if you know how to do it. Okay, now in addition to this, I'm going to the OK key. So now I want to make changes to the P for paragraph tag. Now we have a rule for a P for paragraph for the entire site, but I want to make a P for paragraph rule specifically for main content. Select the tag, make the rule. Select the tag, make the rule. So P for paragraph inside of main content. Okay, so we're going to basically change the line height. Now, in desktop publishing world, this is known as a letting. In web world, this is known as a line height. So we're going to change the line height to 1.6 M spaces. Hit the apply option. Now I have more space between my lines per, per paragraph. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a haircut here. Okay. Now, we can get, this is for a different lesson, but I don't want to go outside of this box. I just want to keep things inside the box. Okay. Now I decided to put a border on this picture. So if I double click the rule for that, okay, this is basically the entire site. Now notice I don't have a rule for specifically for main content image. So let's go to rule specifically for main content image. So main content image and we're going to make this less specific again kill the paragraph tag just i m g tag and we're going to simply put an order on this so we're going to put it a solid two pixel let's put it a hot pink so we can see it border so there's our border now Notice that they both have borders because the parent tag to this tag, the class tag, is this tag. So maybe I don't want a pink border here. Maybe I want a blue border, the same border that's in the same color that's inside the tree. How do I do this? I double click the class tag. I go to border. Now, this is all default. This defaults to that tag. This defaults to that tag. I just want to change the color to this color blue. So this defaults, this defaults, the only thing I'm changing is blue. Therefore that changes to blue. Simple, simple, simple. Okay, make a change, save a change. Next, I want to put some space between the header tag. I already have a rule for header tag, but I don't have a rule for header tag specifically for main content. So how do I do this? I select the tag, make a rule, select the tag, make a rule. Select the H2 tag inside specifically main content. So main content is going to basically have box margin space at the bottom of 0.6 M spaces. And there's my space. It puts more space between this tag and the rest. Make a change, save a change, make a change, save a change. It would happen to get into. Now, Let's make sure this is lined up correctly. So I have wrapper tag, branding tag, site tab, main content, followed by the P for paragraph tag, followed by the image tag. Actually, the H2 tag should come first. Make a change, save a change. So now let's get together and do our links here. So this is one, two, three, four, five separate paragraphs. Five separate paragraphs, I'm gonna select and put this inside of an un order list. Now, I don't want to have these dots in here, so I'm going to create a rule for this. 
Now, first of all, let's make these hyperlinks by double clicking, going to the property palette, putting in the pound symbol, double clicking, going to the property palette, putting in the pound symbol. Now, why am I putting in the pound symbol? Because these, this, this page has not been approved by the client yet. So therefore, these should not be going to two actual pages yet. But I want them to behave like a hyperlink, so I put in the pound symbol. Very important step here. If you put anything but the pound symbol, it's not going to work. It's going to look for a page with that name. So now I create a rule for the unordered list. I select the tag, make rule, specifically for site nav. So I say site nav list type none. Now this has no dots next to it. Then I'm gonna put the A tag rule. The A tag was created by putting in the pound symbol. So I select A tag and I'm gonna put a rule for the A tag specifically for list item inside the unordered list inside the site tag. So I want my type to be white with no line. Now, if I hit the apply option, it disappears because you can't see white and white. You can't see a polar bear in a snowstorm. I want my background color to be the same background color as this purple right here. Now, if I hit the apply option, watch what happens. This is not what I want to have happen. This is a classic example of what you thought was going to happen and what did happen. Software only does what you tell it to do. So this is doing what we told it to do because by default, the category of block, this is a line of type. We don't want this to be a line of type. We want this to be a block of type. So if I hit the apply option, it's now a block of type. Very simply done. It's a block of type. Most people go into Photoshop to do this. You don't have to go into Photoshop, nor should you go into Photoshop. These should be search engine friendly hyperlinks, no graphics, just hyperlinks CSS. Now, want the box height to be 30 pixels high. So I'm going to change the line height to 30 pixels high. Why? Because it put the type vertically in the center. Now the type is vertically in the center. I go to box and from the left, just from the left, I move this for 12 pixels to the left. And if I want to put space between each box, that's margin space. Margin space is outside of the box. So margin space at the bottom of 10 pixels. So there is my navigation links. Now, this is the link for the A tag. If you want the color for the rollover tag, then you have to create a hover tag, hover link. So I select the tag and make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. This one you have to type in from scratch. We're gonna make this the last specific uh, colon H-O-V-E-R. Now, the parent tag to this is the A tag. So I don't have to fill in this redundant stuff here. It defaults to the parent tag, which is the A tag. So I'm simply gonna make this the background color of the opposite of this color. How do I make this the opposite of the color? Well, first of all, let's sample the color. Then I can pick the colors opposite. Brilliant. If this is where the color lives, this is the color's opposite. This way, contrasting colors is a breeze. I'm gonna make this a darker version of uh, the opposite color. Make a change, save a change. So if you publish this page, you will see when you roll over this, or if I go to live view, I can roll over and see my hyperlinks. Very nicely done. So here's an entire page with rules, with floats, with divs, with class tags. Enjoy the video. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. If you have a custom video that you want to see, as long as I get 10 subscribers or more per question, I'd be more than happy to do a custom video. One final step before we go, since I like to teach you proper procedure, technically what I want to do here is move the CSS rules. So basically, this should go after site nav, so it should read site nav, then unordered list, then the A tag, followed by site nav hover tag, followed by main content, P image. Now, the order of this has no bearing on how the site works, but you don't want to have five clients and say, well, this client puts their 
H tag on top and this coin puts the branding tag in the bottom, you drive yourself nuts. Come up with a system that works. This system works. This is the correct way to do things. I teach you real world job on the job techniques, things that you're going to face in the real world. I take everything I do into consideration for how to make changes the simple, time efficient way. Time is money. If you're good at what you do, you can charge $75 an hour, $100 an hour, $150 an hour. I have students that charge $275 to $350 an hour for web work. So if you know what you're doing and you're fast at what you're doing, people will pay the price. Thank you.